We're counting down to the debut of the first single from Memento Mori, Ghosts Again, on Friday. This is Depeche Mode, the podcast. My nerd world. Reach out, touch space. It is my nerd world and Depeche Mode, the podcast. I'm your host, John Justice, and I wanted to put out a special episode today as we head into a Friday to talk a little bit about the few developments that have taken place this week and also share some uh, listener feedback as you and I both anticipate the release of Ghosts Again this coming Friday. It's a time, uh, for me, it's a time for every Depeche Mode fan to just get excited. And as I mentioned on the last episode, uh, this might be the the last time when we have a circumstance after this long a period between releases, such a unique circumstances from the COVID pandemic to the passing of Fletch, this whole time period and era of Depeche Mode really seems to be taking on something unique and something special. And it reminds me quite a bit of the late 80s to mid 90s. I'll get a little bit more into this later on in the episode where Depeche Mode was such a part of our lives at the time at such a young age. And I'll speak for me, but I also know that from the individuals that I've had the just amazing privilege to come in contact with even today it's it's just it is such a unique friendly and amazing community of people from around the world that have been brought together by this band and it still seems like such an exclusive club that the rest of the world still hasn't fully realized it 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 amazes me the number of people that I come across just because of my full-time job as a talk radio host who are completely unaware of the impact of this band. And it's always been like that. You go back to Music for the Masses, Concert for the Masses, masses, which I was so blessed to have memories of because I was there. And how the community around Los Angeles specifically was and the news outlets, and other radio, even other radio stations, just completely unaware of the magnitude, the massive popularity of this band. And it just always seems to be that way. When I tell people how many records they sold, how many shows that I've been to, how they sell out still to this day, decades on, it's amazing. So it still feels like such a, a unique and special thing that I know that we all take ownership in. And so this this time around, and maybe it feels like this before every Depeche Mode release, and I, I just I just know for me, this feels different and unique. And the things that are happening are touching me in a way that they haven't in decades, a way that they haven't since the warehouse records music signing in the 90s before Violator, um, before the tour arrived for Songs of Faith and Devotion at uh, for the four-night stint at the, uh, at the Great Western Forum. So I don't want to make this a long episode today. Like I said, we've got a much larger episode taking place on a Friday uh, after we've all had the opportunity to hear ghosts again. Right, massive speculation on our part, but that's going to happen. So I guess I should just put that. It's going to happen. So first and foremost, let's go here. Uh, there was some breaking news that just happened right before I started recording. But before we get to that, there has been a track list floating around. Now, I laugh because I don't put a lot of stock in this. Uh, I have seen this from multiple sources. I have seen this coming from sources here in America, and I've seen this coming from sources overseas. Now, whether or not this is 
the same information and it's just a game of telephone <laughs> or whether or not there is legitimate some legitimacy to this and i i want to speak to uh, to a bit of what could be the, the legitimacy to this so there is a track list that's floating around most people have dismissed it nobody has really come out and specifically said no 100% it's not real and this is the reason why even though that i know there are individuals on the depeche-mode.com the home website on the Halo forum that seem to be more in the know than what they led uh, than what they lead on. So the track list floating around goes as follows. It shows it's all for ghosts again, apart from a B side, which has a Huey Lewis in the news tinge to it. I'll explain. So uh, the track list that's floating around uh, has the single version of ghosts again at uh, three minutes and 44 seconds, the album version at five minutes and 35 seconds. Then we have a B side, that's titled Power of Love and Hate. And then we have RMX version and dub version. My initial take from this was this felt like something that we would have gotten in the 90s. Especially with something labeled dub version. It's just not typically the type of remix or version that we've seen from the band over the course of the past, oh, I don't know, 20 years or so. That being said, I rem- I recall seeing a post of this where somebody had very emphatically stated that they saw this firsthand and that this track list was kind of a rough outline. The only way I can see this being legitimate is if somebody copied what was the track list and so RMX version was just basically a shorthand way of saying this is a remix without giving us the official title and that the dub version is also some type of dub remix that has a longer title. We just don't know by whom it is. On its face, you look at it and go, power of love and hate? Really? Uh, Who knows? It reminds me of, uh, for those that remember, there was uh, quite a bit of talk of, and I can't remember what album it was attached to, but there was a, uh, it might have been, I think it was around the Exciter time, because I know we got, some leaked info on that around Exciter, although things tightened up quite a bit after that. I missed the days of leaked music. I'm, I'm obviously shocked that we haven't heard Ghosts again by now. And I think it's just because there's fewer and fewer physical copies being distributed. And typically that's how this stuff would get leaked. But there was this um, rumor floating around of a, of a Depeche Mode track called Ponytail Girl that everybody, everybody was talking about. And it, it turned out to be a song, but it was by the the independent band color theory which sounded a lot like depeche mode at the time and i remember you could find it on uh it was like your uh, your lime wire or your napster of the uh of the time so there could be some legitimacy to this and whoever put it out simply created the track list based off of what they saw without giving specifics I'm still putting the tag on this that this is fake, but we'll know in less than 48 hours or so. By the way, my speculation is based on the countdown. that So I'm in Minneapolis, um, United States. I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And based on the countdown clock, it looks as if it counts down to zero at, I believe, around 11 o'clock my time, which would be noon Eastern here in america Uh, i haven't looked at i didn't look at it before the show started but i remember that um when uh i I was before i went to bed last night i was looking through on on a few things and i saw that the timing on i was like oh i was thinking it would come out around midnight and it it sounds as if no it'll be out around noon on um uh or 11 o'clock my time noon eastern here in the uh here in the united states So I paused the show in the middle of my uh, talking about what is most likely that fake track list. I happen to just I'm I have the um, the home Halo uh, message board up. I happen to do a refresh on it because some of the information I'm going to share you about this uh, billboard going up in Los Angeles, some information just dropped on that. I did a refresh and um, a poster on the message board. Uh, Valdix, want to give credit where credit's due, just posted a link to the um, Italian Rolling Stone where uh, they've just posted an article that Depeche Mode will be performing at San Remo um, 
in the middle of this month. Dave Gunn and Martin Gore will perform on the final evening of San Remo on Saturday, February 11th. The push on this album is much bigger than I expected. I know that just based off of the initial announcement of the tour, I was excited. Of course, we're expecting a second leg, especially here in the States, because we only have a select few dates. But the inclusion of the band on at so many different entities, including San Remo and another one I'm going to mention where they will be a part of some recording sessions for a French television show. I don't know. It all has the vibe and the feeling that this is this album is going to be pretty is going to be pretty big. Um and I'm basing this off of, I guess I'm basing my my thought on this off of comments that Dave made during the Berlin press conference of how he wasn't sure if he wanted to go out on tour again. And he had to think about it a little longer than he did before. And at the time of the Berlin press conference, I was getting ultra release vibes where the band didn't want to go on tour Dave was still coping with his um, with his rehabilitation. I didn't want to put pressure on himself from touring. And while Dave, obviously, for a long time now, has been uh, clean, which is just a miracle and uh, in and of itself, and a testament to uh, the person that is Dave Dave gone. I was kind of going off the assumption of based on the band getting on the passing of Andrew Fletcher that. You know, they would do a large tour, but perhaps it would be a little bit more subdued around the edges compared to what they normally do. But by all intents and purposes, it looks like this is going to be just as just as big and expansive as was the Spirit Tour. Now, some other news I wanted to share, and that is the uh, Discord official, the official Depeche Mode Discord page. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not, I have not bothered with Discord, I've been leaving it up to the people on the message boards to fill me in on that. It's just not something that I'm a part of at the moment. And with everything else I have going on in my life, I didn't want to board. I didn't want to uh, go and, and hop on board and join another social networking aspect. However, um, on the official uh, Depeche Mode Discord page, uh, earlier this week, they showed a, a photo. And then on the following day, a map to a location, which was a storefront or potentially a warehouse in Los Angeles, California. Uh, the speculation has been that there would maybe be a mural unveiling or maybe a possible live location for Friday. So the original photo shows what could have been interpreted as a sparse outline of wings, maybe the silhouette of two people. Honestly, when I was looking at it, it looks like a bare wall that had residue left over from a previous wall wrap peeled away, leaving marks on the wall. There was a subsequent photo that a poster had found. Um, it was a Google photo from Google Maps, uh, and it showed a large crafts food advertisement at that location. So my initial speculation was that this was going to be the location of where a new billboard would be going up. I did not think that what was shown first of what looked like it could be angel wings in the silhouette would be part of the art. However, uh, based off of what was just posted within the past hour, it looks indeed like this will be a billboard of some kind. You can see uh, two individuals um, on uh, the the scaffolding uh, that are painting what look to be wings of some point at this time. At, at this point in time, um, and the original markings that they showed earlier in the week look to have been placeholders. There's also now a live stream that you can sign up to watch of the billboard being painted in real time on in one of the channels. So you have to go and join the server to watch it. But what this looks like is potentially Anton Corbin artwork, which would either be the Memento Mori album cover or perhaps the single art for Ghosts again. Uh, and it's interesting too because what is shown so far, and I'll actually go ahead and um, and uh, and bring it uh, bring it up here. Um, what it looks like so far to be is uh, the background of what we saw in the initial countdown and postcard sign up that um, 
that popped up at the end of the uh, at the end of the weekend, or I guess on on Monday. Um, that the background that they're painting looks to have that same black with with gray. So on Friday, along with getting new music, we'll obviously be getting the artwork in the form of this uh, this billboard uh, in uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, and again, the entirety of the speculation resonates as Depeche Mode makes special and unique everything they come in contact with. I still have Polaroid photos of me standing in front of an empty arena in Concord, California for one of the exotic tour uh, devotional t- <laughs> devotional um, shows. Uh, I still have photographs of the billboard that went up outside the Tower Records in Los Angeles for the Depeche Mode um, Songs of Faith and Devotion live record. Whether it's concert locations, um, again, for me, the Rose Bowl, Dodger Stadium, meeting uh, Alan and Martin at a nightclub uh, uh, during the World Violation Tour, the likes of which I still have no idea how we figured that out or who we heard that from or how that came about, but... I, I guess I think back pre-internet in how we would have discovered that information, apart from most likely just knowing people that were in contact, in close contact with some members of the band in some way, shape, or form, and being told that potentially some of the band could be at these locations. Again, it feels like the late 80s through the mid-90s as we all sit back and wait for for more information. And it's just another reminder of how special and unique this band has been. I've been making notes for future episodes, as I mentioned on the previous episode, uh, and I've gotten a lot of great responses so far. Uh, As we work through the promotion of Memento Mori, um, share thoughts about Ghosts again on Friday, I plan on telling my own stories and your stories, more importantly, of how Depeche Mode has impacted your life. So I began to just start taking notes. I pulled out the tour programs uh, from um, from concerts and uh, have you know kind of laid out the the albums in order just to kind of spark memories. I pulled up the list of the thirty three Depeche Mode shows that I've been to to kind of jog those memories and stories. And one thing just became abundantly clear, and that is. And this band has just been a part of my life since I was a kid and has been in touch with me as a person um in 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 ways that I didn't even it didn't even imagine. Uh, it's just it really is um it really is remarkable how special this band is. One more news item and then we'll get to uh, some of your listener feedback. I have a lot more listener feedback that I'll share on Friday's show. There's a few uh, emails that I wanted to get to today that are more relevant to the lead up of uh, of the song reveal on Friday. But as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, Depeche Mode will be appearing. Well, they will be recording something on Valentine's Day. Um, Terratata is a 100 percent music French TV show where the artists perform live. And they're also uh, as part of the show is that apparently there are frequent unexpected duets with other um, artists. Uh, There was an individual on, and you know what, let me go ahead and give credit where credit's due here. It was a Dave Wunner, so Dave Wunner, on the the Halo uh, Depeche-Mode.com message board that had posted this information. There will be two recording sessions on February 13th and 14th. Um, One of those will be with Depeche Mode. Uh, and uh, is potentially slated to be broadcast sometime in March, uh, between March and May. Apparently, Terratata tried several times to welcome uh, Depeche Mode since 1995, but the show failed every time because of scheduling. So for those French fans of the band, uh, I imagine this is going to be something uh, rather special to finally have Depeche Mode performing uh, there on this particular uh, television show. I'm really excited to um, be recording the show every every single week um, as we all share in this experience together. And I was I've been just thrilled the emails that have been coming in uh, since the episode a few days ago, uh, a few days ago. Again, if you want to email uh, talk show nerd at Gmail dot com, if that's tough to remember, you can also do the John Justice, J.O.N. 
thejohnjustice at gmail.com. Either of those uh, work. You can get there through mynerdworld.net as well. There's uh, My contact information is available there, as is all of my uh, social networking platforms. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'm on uh, TikTok. Of course, I'm on Twitter. That's all available on the contact page at mynerdworld.net. Uh, Speaking of contact, let's go ahead and uh, hear from uh, some of you. Neil Gregory uh, writes in, Great pod, John. Thank you. Can't wait for Friday. Uh, Milan, July with my 18-year-old son. His first Depeche Mode gig this time around. I do think it's the last one, but I'm kind of okay with that. Sad, too. Uh, Regarding your stories, I have a story for pretty much every album since the 101 release in 1989. Uh, They've got me through so much and do even now. Amen to that, man. Uh, My mom is in the hospital with dementia, and Memento Mori really resonates with me. I'm okay for Dave and Mart to leave it after this as they deserve it. And listen, I'll be honest with you. um, Like, even saying those things, I'm with you, and I completely agree, but it almost brings tears to my eyes. Um, uh, The... This album already uh, resonating with me as well because of the things that I've gone through within the past year that I've talked about on the show and I won't get into uh, now. It just all adds to um, how special this whole time period feels. And uh, I know for me, um, as this 37 year going on, I I haven't done the math, I'm getting old. Uh, I I know that I'm just trying to relish every minute. Um, I'm staring at the... 101 box set that I bought not too long ago, uh, and this is good. This is going to be my go-to uh, after whatever we get on uh, Friday. Uh, I plan to spend some time watching uh, the 101 documentary. I kind of wrestled with what I wanted to watch, and that's what I've that's what I've landed on for now. Thank you, Neil, for the uh, feedback. Uh, Michael Henry writes: uh, True that the teaser "Ghosts Again" sounds too normal, too simple from a Depeche perspective. But as a DM fan, of course, I will be more than happy on Friday to see them uh, see them back. Uh, thank you, Michael, for uh, for your uh, response as well. Can I just mention too? I, I don't want to blow past like Milan. I, the fact that I'm making contact and hearing from people all around this planet, I, it just it. It never ceases to amaze me. And again, I host a radio show, so and and I've got listeners all over the country. But still, um, f- meeting new fans from around the globe, it's still just a thrill for me. Uh, Glenn Rothery writes, as it relates to uh, the potential Anton Corbin artwork, as long as it's not his Kitty Crayon artwork. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, I'm looking forward to whatever Anton puts together. I've always been a big fan of Anton's work. And as I mentioned, I've been going through the tour programs and uh, I just enjoy reading Anton's comments uh, in uh, in those tour programs and his perspective of the uh, of the band. Speaking of which, I have a, a real I'm going to save it for Friday, uh, but I had a, a listener of the show reach out who uh, has a friend who has some direct connections with the band that uh, the email came in and I hadn't read it yet. Typically I wait until I do the show to read the emails live before I preview them just because I like to keep it spontaneous and fresh. However, there were, uh, I I wanted to respond to people uh, beforehand. Uh, People were kind enough to write. I want to be able to write back. And uh, one of the individuals that wrote me has a very specific direct connection with the band that my eyes lit up over, and I can't wait to share it with you on uh, Friday. Uh, last one comes from Alana Hughes, who writes, so excited for the single, the album, and the tour. Looking forward to seeing the boys in Berlin uh, July, uh, July, July 7th, uh, which is the day before my birthday, which is July 8th. So, again, Berlin, I just... It's, it's amazing to me. So, look, that wraps up the show uh, for today. I actually meant to keep it shorter, but at least I kept it kept it under 40 minutes. I'll do a quick peruse here of Depeche-Mode.com to see if uh, anybody is writing anything. All right, somebody is speculating on the forum that the wings may make up the M's of the title. Uh, I'm not on the server. I may try to get to the server to watch this... Um, to watch this mural go up, but I will. I will tell you what. I will. Uh, I'm going to drag this photo out, and if you are on Twitter and you want to follow me on Twitter at the my nerd world at the my nerd world on Twitter, um, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and start posting the images as they come out on the forum. So if you want to follow me 
and uh, turn on notifications, um, I'll be sure to kind of keep everybody updated on these photos. I'll do the work so that you don't have to. I'm looking for this stuff anyway, so it's no sweat off of uh, it's no sweat off of my back. So on Friday, big show on Friday. Looking forward to it. Can't wait to share my thoughts on a ghost again, and I can't wait to hear from you. So. If you can, as soon as you have an opportunity to spend some time uh, with the new single, please um, drop me an email. Again, talkshownerd at gmail.com or um, the John Justice, J O N, the John Justice at uh, gmail.com. Also, would love to know how you're going to spend this weekend. Are you going to be doing anything special Depeche Mode related? Do you have anything planned along with your stories of how Depeche Mode has impacted you throughout your life? So until then, I hope you have a fantastic few days. And wherever you are, you're happy, you're healthy, and you're safe. Cannot wait to get behind the microphone on Friday. I'll talk to you then. Bye. My Nerd World.